people are raised by wolves. I had the affliction of being raised by psychologists. They insisted that I wasn't an experiment, but on the other hand, I'm not so sure. <laughs> and whilst I did grow up learning about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the reactivity of my prefrontal cortex, the one more useful thing they taught me was about connections. Connections between people, connections between their successes, connections between their behavior. And how together our connections make us stronger than what we are individually. And I think that this is synergy, where two or more things interact in a way that enhances or magnifies for more effect. Where the sum of the whole is bigger and more meaningful than the sum of the parts. Where people can create astounding achievements by coming together. And this got me thinking that whilst we can learn a lot from having a conversation with someone, once you synthesize that information from a group of people, you can find out so much more. And this fascination starts my story of how I came to take a year out of studying chemistry to find out the secrets of what connects successful women. The day I decided to study chemistry, it was a Thursday morning, and we all walked into our first chemistry class of the year. And I was nervous. I was thinking that I'd picked the wrong subject, that chemistry was going to be too hard, and what's more, the teacher that we had had a reputation for eating his students alive. So, our chemistry professor came through the door, and he was tall and serious, and all my fears were validated. But then, without speaking, he put these two images up on the board. These two images are why I now study chemistry. My teacher showed us his images, and he told us that the real essence of chemistry isn't about the numbers or the elements or even the periodic table. The real essence of chemistry is about how it makes us think, that we can think linearly, like this, but the real skill is thinking like this. This is synergy, and only with synergy can we reach the full potential of chemistry. He said that the real skill is connecting all the dots that you didn't even know existed. And I wondered whether we could do the same with people. So, in September 2020, I took a year out of studying chemistry, and I made it my mission to spend the year interviewing as many women as I could about success for the Her Ambition podcast. I wanted to find out what message the top successful women wanted to pass on to my generation. So I started my search, and I spent the year interviewing over 30 amazing and diverse women about their successes, challenges and failures. And these women were at the top of their game. They were lawyers, doctors, activists, CEOs, vice presidents of multinational companies, commanders in the armed services and more. And each conversation that I had changed me, and it changed my perception of women in the working world. And there was one thread of conversation in particular that interested me, and that was their response to the question, what mistake have you made in your career that you don't want my generation, Generation Z, to make? And here are three examples. One woman I interviewed was called Claire, and Claire really seemed like the woman that had it all. She'd studied maths at Oxford, she'd worked her way up through some of the most prestigious companies in the UK. And Claire told me a story about her first job. She'd just started working at a large multinational company, and her boss had asked the team she was on to fix a problem. So, Claire decided to get to work straight away. This was going to be her time to shine. She was going to show just how much work she could get done, how much impact she could add to the company. However, when it came to presenting their findings, she found out that a group of her male colleagues had rallied together, and they'd worked on the problem as a team which not only made it easier and more fun, but it allowed them to solve the problem synergistically. Consequently, their solutions were taken up and Claire's were casually dropped. 
Sam had a similar story. Sam said that during her time at university, she had been working night after night on her campaign team for presidency of the student union. She was then shocked to find that her opponent's campaign team was five times the size of her own. They could bounce ideas off each other. She was under-resourced. And of course, she sadly lost. And finally, there was Sarah, who told me that her biggest failure was the time Sarah had been given double the amount of work by her employers due to staff cuts. And even though she was refused a pay rise, she doubled down, accepted it, and tried to see the change as empowering. Two months later, she was burnt out, exhausted, and taking the blame for why her work wasn't up to scratch. And this pattern was repeated time and time again throughout the 30 women that I interviewed. My interviewers established that they had initially fallen for the same message, that we have to be strong, fiercely independent women to succeed. Because in contrast to popular belief, the message of independence was not what had helped these women get so far. The key message was that we need to work collaboratively, collaboratively within tribes, because tribes create synergy among people. When working in tribes, those synergistic interactions will happen, and we will help solve the world's most urgent problems. However, my own view is that this myth of independency certainly hasn't gone away, but has distilled down and become even stronger in my generation, Generation Z. As the first true digital natives, we've been exposed to the internet, social media, and mobile technology since birth. And from this, we've picked up a powerful sense of individualism, self-reliance, and the idea that success goes hand in hand with self-sufficiency. But although independence may be a key value for Gen Zers, we need to start acting differently. Now, I know what you've been thinking. How does any of this relate to chemistry? Well, a lot, as it turns out. You see, chemistry is all about interactions. The interactions between atoms of different elements combine to create new molecules. And these new molecules combine to create unique and life-changing substances. And this is a wonderful analogy for how we can create synergy among people. The interactions between different people with different strengths combine to create new ideas. And these new ideas combine to create unique and life-changing solutions to climate change, the energy crisis, and future pandemics. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this thought. Synergy is not just about achieving more than we could in our own. It's about unlocking our potential and becoming our best selves. With the right tribe, the right mentors, and the right mix of creative people, anything is possible. So, just like my chemistry professor told me, instead of interacting like this, we need to start interacting like this. Then we will find the dots that connect us and send our ideas into the world. Thank you. <laughs>